All right, hello. So I wanted to go over a more complicated concept of how you can use messages and interpreters inside of Forge Networking uh, Alloy here. So I'm going to show you what happens whenever I start up these two instances. So I'm going to have a server over here. I'm going to spawn five random cubes in five random locations. Um, and then I'm going to connect. And you're going to get all of those, those cubes in those random locations. Now, the concept here is how we can use messages to make this flow. Now, one thing you may be thinking initially is, well, when the player joins, I want these cubes to, all these cubes or all these entities to be sent to them at once so they get all these entities. The, the idea of when a player joins, um, you know, things happen when a player joins. When a, when a player joins to the network, it also has to load the map. So if you wind up sending the cubes and the map at the same time, the cubes may spawn before the map is loaded. And this is, is a, a likely case. And so you want timing. You want things to happen in a very specific order so that everything is exactly uh, where it needs to be and happens when it needs to happen so it doesn't get clobbered by other messages. So we're going to go over and look at some of the, some of the ways that, that we have that set up. Okay, so I have a simplified uh, lifeline chart here. Um, so on the left is the client, on the right is the server. Uh, all the connect stuff happens before any of this stuff. So what happens is the client connects, blah, blah, blah. And then once the client is connected, it says, uh, okay, what's my identity? And the uh, server says, here's your identity. This is who you are going to be on the network. Then the client says, what map do I load? And then the server says, well, this is the map that you want to load. Then the client says, are there any network entities? Can I have all of them? And then the server will say, here are the list of all the entities. So you can see that there's a request response thing going on here in this sequence. Now, the request response is fantastic for making sure your flows are the way they should be or are working out well. So uh, with this request response set up, this is, this is one way you could do it. There's a million ways you can do messages. You could just say, set me up from the client and then have a message that just says, uh, here's your identity, here's the map to load, and here's all the entities. And you could just do that one single flow. Keeping these separate um, it helps just kind of show how this works when people first read it rather than here's all my payload. And here's all my payload often is hard to change and you'll break the open close principle where you're going and you're modifying this one giant payload over and over and over to add every little thing that you can think of in the beginning. So it's, in my opinion, I, I prefer this kind of request response and also it allows you to see where the client is along the process and if the client fails to say send me all network entities you know that they possibly had an exception with the map load and you can deal with uh, what to do with the the client from that position in this flow so let's look at some of the code on how how this works we're going to skip the identity part because we do that internally uh, early on in forge and uh, it's not really necessary to understanding how you load a map and get all the entities. So a good place to start is here inside of this Forge main object. You'll find a Forge engine facade with a scene to load here. So if we just took a quick look at the Forge en engine facade and we jumped down to where we see the map loading stuff, you'll see that there is a server started and a client started. So when the server starts, it just loads the map that has the scene to load. Now when the client has started, when the client has gone through, got its identity and all that stuff and is ready to start doing things uh, in the game, the client, when the client starts, you can see that it sends a reliable message called a new map, uh, new load uh, request, new, sorry, new map load request message. So if we looked at that message, you'd see that it's blank. There's nothing in here because it's just a request. Hey, you give me my map. However, the server, uh, when it does the interpreter for this, the server uh, gets the current map that it's running and then it sends that to the client as a uh, map load response message. So when the client gets this map load response message, it gets the map ID from the server. And then you can see inside of its interpreter, sorry, 
I'm jumping around here. Don't try to understand all the code. Just kind of see how it flows back and forth between message and interpreter, message and interpreter. So now this is on the cl on the uh, on the server only. This uh, sorry on the client only. The server does not execute this. When the client interprets the map load response, it then loads the map. The next thing it does is say, "Okay, I've loaded the map. So now." I need to request all the entities. So it sends a message to the server, hey, give me all the entities. So you can see this is another blank uh, message because all it needs it to be is a request. The, the client is requesting entities. Of course, you can add stuff in here, like if you only want a certain type of entities or whatever. Um, so now we go into here and we see that uh, when the server, because the server gets this message, as we saw instead of the UML. So the the server gets the load map request and it sends the load map. And then the server gets uh, the all network entities uh, message. So that's why the get all entities request interpreter is interpreted only by the server. So then the server just goes through all of the network entities it has, uh, everything that has that that comes that implements I, Unity and uh, Entity, um, which is just an interface we can go over later. But this isn't so much about entities. This is more about how the request flow can create very complicated um, behavior and be able to make sure that state is exactly where it should be at every stage. So now the server goes through all the entities and then it creates a message uh, called the send entities to new player message. And that message gets populated with all the entities, all their positions, all their scales, all their prefab uh, IDs, all that stuff. And then we send the, uh, send the new entities or send the list of entities from the server to the client. So this is constructed on the server. It's sent over. And then the client interprets that message, so it's valid only on the client. And you see the on valid on server is false. So now on the client, we get the message, uh, and then we go through the, the all the entities in there, and we spawn each entity using its scale, rotation, position, prefab ID, uh, other IDs, and all that kind of stuff. So now we have all these entity objects inside of the scene that now have the same exact ID matched with the server, which means that if the server sends any messages specific for this entity, you already have it now and you can start processing with it. Um, so this is how you can create very complicated flows. You can, there's other, like I said, there's millions of ways you can do this. I chose to go this request response route uh, for, for this example and also for the examples inside of uh, the, the scene that you'll get with Forge Networking Alloy. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to make some more videos on more complicated topics on entities and moving things and, and lots of other behaviors that um, are, are fairly complex when you think about them at a larger scale. But I want to take this one piece at a time so it's not information overload. So if there's anything that you gain from this one, it isn't the code that I showed. Even that some of that code is going to change as we go. What is important is this concept of the client sending a message, getting a message, and then this section down here where it's a chain of messages, where the client sends a message, server interprets it. You can think of these boxes as interpret the interpreter. Um, server interprets the message, sends the message back. Uh, I guess I could put these arrows up here inside of these boxes, but think think that these are connected so it interprets the message and in the interpreter it sends a message back and then in this one's interpreter it sends a message back and in this one's interpreter it sends a message back so essentially the message interpreters are talking with each other saying uh, can what is the map I need to load this is the map you need to load what is the, all of the network entities these are all the network entities so if you looked uh, inside of the interpreter so the map load response interpreter um, this is when the client gets the map from the server. It sends a message to the server requesting all the entities. So there's this chaining of, of information. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next videos.